Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about why we canceled the wedding. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, we did cancel it. And I'm also going to be doing a Q&A. I did put up a question box on my stories. Just wanted to open it up and see if anyone had any questions regarding the wedding. I thought I'd just answer it in this video in case other people might be going through the same things. These are just like things that I did. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, in good health, staying safe, and let's get into the video. Okay, this might be a long one. I'm gonna take you chronologically through when we first got engaged to what's happening now. So we got engaged last August on our 9 year anniversary and we thought, oh, let's just get married on our 10 years. That'd be something special. So we started planning almost immediately because one year in like wedding planning, it just, it, it's not that much time to do everything well so i thought we flew back to the bay area we knew we wanted to uh, look for venues out there because majority of our family's out there and we knew what we wanted we wanted something luxury modern but had the view of the city we came across um this venue and we we, we looked at a couple of venues uh the if you want to see the full video it's on our vlog channel but came across this one it was perfect and we wanted a small wedding a hundred roughly maybe a little bit less and we found that one we secured it put the deposit down and then we took our engagement photos we did it in Yosemite and we also did it in Banff and then fast forward to December I flew back to the Bay Area to go wedding dress shopping which is on my channel as well but I knew the designer that I wanted and I knew that it was gonna take up to eight months to custom make so I had to kind of knock that out really quickly, which I did. And then we secured the videographer and photographer who happens to be in the wedding industry that we're friends with. And for makeup and hair, it was like a no-brainer. I wanted Melanie to do my hair and makeup because I've looked up to her for so long. She used to work at Mac and I used to skip classes in college just to go buy makeup and she would be there to help me. So uh, she's also in the wedding industry, so I knew I wanted her. So a lot of things I already knew I wanted, so it was kind of like, Quick. So fast forward to March is kind of like when the pandemic started happening and quarantine was put in place and I was thinking August is a long time from now we have a lot of time to kind of like figure things out but maybe I should stop planning and then mid April I was like okay I, I don't know what to do so I reached out to the wedding venue and I was like what are my options right now because now would be the time where I send out my invitation. Should I even do that? Should I continue the wedding planning journey or should I just stop completely? And they said, okay, well, we'll give you, here are your options. You can either postpone it to 2021 to be safe or you can wait it out and risk just having the wedding on August 1st. And I was like, okay, so I have two weeks to make a final decision. and with august being our 10 year anniversary like i wanted that so badly whether that meant um, having the reception or just signing papers at city hall and at that point i was like i'd rather just get married on paper i don't want to do a wedding in 2021 because like that date is so significant so i asked them if they could give us a uh, refund and they said no we can't give you a refund if you forfeit the wedding then you would still have to pay 75 percent of the remaining balance which is a lot and then the weeks went by i missed that deadline and it turns out that the person who was actually helping us uh was out of office because of the pandemic so it it bought us a lot of time and i think this was june at this point where my sister who's a wedding planner she's been helping me throughout this whole process she was like just pick a date in 2021 just pick any date and i was like okay well so we reached back out to weston and at this point it was like a little less than two months out from the wedding already so they said here's what we can do we can either you can either postpone it to 2021 if the date is available we will transfer your wedding to next year for free or if the date is not available then that is the only way we can give you a refund. So I was like, okay, just tell them we want, I think August 14th. I think we just, I just picked, we just picked a random date and they reached back out and they were like, unfortunately that date is taken. Is there any other date that you want? And I was like, wow, okay, that works perfectly. And then, so we said, no, there's, that is the only date we want. Are we able to go through with the refund now? And she said, yes, we, we did tell you that we could honor it if your date wasn't available. So 
we got our full deposit back and that is completely done and over with and we will not be having a wedding in 2021 and we're most likely gonna get married on paper uh, next month and not have to deal with it again. It's just so crazy because before I got engaged, I was like, I would never want a wedding. It's such a waste of money. Like to me personally, it doesn't make sense to recite my vows in front of an audience. Like that is nobody's business, but me and Andy's. But when we got engaged, I was like, oh my God, I want a wedding. I looked up everything on Pinterest and I was like, I want this, I want that. And so I think I just jumped on it on impulse and we were both so excited about the whole process. After this pandemic hit, it just kind of made me realize how much money we were actually spending on one night. And I get it, it's not just one night, it's a celebration with family and friends. But at that point I was like, I'm over it. So now that our venue is completely canceled, we reached out to all of our vendors and we weren't able to get back any deposits, which is fine. We were okay going into that in the first place because it did they did say it's non-refundable, but they were super kind to give us a year's credit. So we can use it within the next year. Um, but if we don't, then we'll lose that deposit completely, which is okay. Uh, regarding my dress and Andy's suit, Andy got his suit already. But my dress finally came like mid-May and I was like, okay, I have no idea like what to do with it now. I'm gonna see if we can go home and just take pictures with it. I just wanna wear it already since I have it. I don't want it to go to waste. So that is the story and that is where we are at now. I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into the Q&A parts because I do have a lot of questions. Um, I think a lot of them might be like repeat questions. So I'm gonna try to get through as many as I can. Someone asked, Will you do a smaller civil court wedding? And the answer is no, no reception, no ceremony. We're just gonna probably jump straight into uh, signing papers. How did your family react to canceling? So we only told, uh, I only told like my immediate family and then Andy told his immediate family, but because our guest list was so small, we were like having a hard time deciding who can be invited to the wedding and who couldn't. And so I don't even think outside from our media family, they even know they were gonna be invited, so it, that didn't even really matter. Majority of the questions were, were you able to get any of the, your money back? And um, I did answer that earlier, but long story short, I only got money back from the venue. Everyone else, I did not. Yeah. How are you doing mentally? That's a difficult and heartbreaking decision to make. I'm actually relieved that we don't have to worry about it anymore. Did you guys set a budget where you guys like, fuck it, it's our wedding? We did set a budget in the beginning, but as things were, as we were like planning, we kept increasing and increasing and increasing our budget. And eventually we we're like, fuck it, it's our wedding because our family was like, you guys work hard, you guys deserve it. And Andy and I were both paying for it out of pocket. So they were like, you worked hard for it. If you want a nice wedding, then you deserve it, basically. Even though you don't get a wedding, can you and Andy still take wedding pictures? Yeah, we're, we are planning on doing that. So. Um, since we already have our uh, dress and our suit. If it's not too personal to share how much was the overall wedding cost, and this is something I'd be happy to share because I know that there are some brides out there that this might be helpful for in terms of budgeting or knowing what certain things cost. Um, so our overall wedding would have been roughly 80-ish K. And I know that that is a lot of money, but the venue obviously was the biggest factor. Uh, depending on where you do it, it's gonna be very expensive. Obviously, a city like San Francisco, they are gonna mark up the price a shit ton, you know? And you have to figure out how many courses you want. The more courses, the more expensive, obviously. How many guests determines how much you're gonna pay. For our venue specifically, we were gonna pay roughly around $300 per guest, which is already expensive in itself. But on top of that, you have to pay the rental fee to rent out the venue, which is crazy because you don't get the venue for a full day. You are renting that venue for a certain amount of time and I believe it was only like six hours. You get that space and you have to pay that much money. So that already was another like stress factor for me. And over time, I just started to think that it was not even worth it at all to even do it for that much money. Second biggest cost factor, is that how you say it? 
was uh, my dress and that I paid about 12,000 for the dress and it is very expensive it is a lot of money and I wanted it specifically because that is the designer that I've always wanted when I was gonna get married and it was custom made in another country so the everything about like the detail of the dress it was very intricate when I was with my bridal squad they were like you worked hard if you want this dress you deserve it you know um, so that was kind of like some a gift to myself the third biggest cost was uh, the florist and that total would have been about 8700 and that includes all of the flowers and I'll put up a picture here of my mood board I showed this to the florist and she was super kind to do a mock-up for me so I went with my sister don't know where the picture is right now but this she did it exactly like this and it was gonna be so beautiful and also included the king's tables the chairs the backdrop and the chargers which is the plates depending on how you want it, if you want it super fancy obviously it's going to cost more if you want certain flowers it's going to cost more and as i said earlier it all just comes down to uh how like fancy i guess you want your wedding but there are definitely ways to have a very very nice wedding at an affordable price there is no doubt about that with my sister being a wedding planner i've seen so many weddings at a lower cost that were still so beautiful so it just all depends on your budget where you want to do it how crazy you want certain things and your overall like kind of idea your style and yeah are you going to get a refund for your wedding dress unfortunately not because it was custom made for me so when i first signed it it was already non-refundable and so i have it back in the bay area it's still at the boutique and uh, next time i go home i have to go pick that up so someone said does the dress fit and i actually have no idea and that's also another big thing that i was really 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 stressed about i got my dress custom made to my body in december and even from that time in december all the way until august which we were going to get married this august i was so stressed about whether or not i would fit my dress because um, I fluctuate so much with my weight and I thought what if I gain weight and I won't be able to fit the dress then what or like if I uh, lost weight then of course I can alter it but just that thought of having to postpone it to 2021 I didn't want to have to worry about the stress of my body fitting or not fitting I can of course I can always work out but like what if things happen down the line or like what if I happen to get pregnant and I don't fit the dress and then it's just a, it's just a waste but that was just another stress added so I'm glad there is no 2021 cost versus benefits of postponing rather than canceling so the cost is the same as if you were to have the wedding this year it's just pushed back to next year so um, instead of paying the remaining balance which we were supposed to do this July they would have um, postponed that remainder deposit until right before the wedding of 2021 so the benefit is that you don't have to spend a large lump sum um, this year you just have to you know pay it next year that's that's just the difference um, canceling depending on what the policy is with your venue or your vendors like I said uh, we were able to get back our money from the venue but not the vendors so but I think that pretty much sums everything up. If I missed any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, if you guys need help or advice or anything regarding the wedding stuff, uh, I know as much as I went through, so I'd be happy to share anything with you guys. But that is pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting. Hope you guys stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.